Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, seventh Agile Beers. Uh, for the next 20 minutes, I'll be boring you a little bit with some uh, some story. So uh, next, last Agile Beers, the, they were requesting people to come up and uh, having uh, something to share. And I found this kind of uh, an interesting subject, uh, and I called it 1% continuous improvement. But before I talk about it a little bit about myself, uh, I'm uh, Rui, Rui Costa. I'm a Scrum Master. I have a background in a computer engineer. So for a long time I was a developer. I worked in business intelligence. For a while I was Oracle certified and I was doing a lot of code and I got all that uh, cool Agile uh, certification shit. Um, yeah. uh, I started hacking code since like the 90s, and if you didn't notice, I'm extremely lazy and bald. So yeah, please pay attention to that part. So why are we here? We're talking about uh, Kaizen. So this is a, a story that I want to share with you, is about Kaizen. Kaizen means uh, change for good. Uh, and that's a little bit of uh, this story. And I want to bring you to to something that I learned not that uh, long ago, and it's a story about the Brit the Great Britain uh, cycling team. So, from the period of 1908 to around 2007, this team was suffering for a rare case of mediocrity, and. So they didn't want much. And I would like to, to check with you guys if you have kind of an idea of how much. So raise your hands if you agreed with this statement. So in this period of 99 years, they won around 30 titles. 20? 10 titles? OK. Five? I'm considering titles everything from a gold medal to a Tour de France. OK, OK. No, during these uh, 99 years, um, they won exactly one title. They won an uh, Olympic gold medal in, a, well, a long time ago. No Tour de France. They were completely out of the, the big scene. They were so out of the big scene that, as far as I understood, there was a big uh, company producing bicycles that refused to sell bicycles to this team because they were thinking like our <laughs> image is going to be really really bad if people see them riding our bicycles <laughs> yeah so so th Wait. that was a, an interesting thing and for years? Uh, 99 years mm -hmm. around yeah so they won only one title but then 2008 came in and everything changed and they won uh, eight uh, gold medals in the Beijing uh, Olympics and they started winning Tour de France from 2012 onwards and this all happened because of this guy and I don't just like him because he's bald <laughs> which he is uh, so this is a <laughs> so this is a Sir uh, David Brailsford so he joined the, the team in 2003 and he joined with a completely different mindset. And the mindset that he had was marginal gains. So his idea was, if you split everything that goes into riding a bicycle to its slowest uh, little bit, and if you improve that little bit by 1%, you'll be able to achieve a lot. So you could go and uh, look at the clothes and find the best clothes for the rider. and. Uh, make sure that they were always warm and that will uh, increase their performance or just making the the fabric a little bit thinner so that you, you would save a little bit of weight there uh, they would test something like let's say the oil you check the oil uh, oil that would deliver a bit less friction so that you could get um, a bit more faster without uh, having to pedal their heart even the the seat can you take anything out of this? Uh, sorry, can you take anything out of the seat that is just like waste of uh, of weight? Can you make it in a way that is more comfortable to the rider, and not just make it generic, like 
for each rider having a seat that will work for them. And the craziest one, teaching them how to properly wash their hands. Because in theory, if you are really good at washing your hands, there is a lower chance that you'll get sick, so you'll be able to run more and train more, and you'll be better. So all these small things, in the end, will increase. And one of the other ones that they even had was, so uh, cyclists are always going from city to city. And imagine uh, something like the Tour de France, right? You're doing uh, 200 kilometers here, 200 kilometers there, and you're always uh, sleeping on a different hotel. So even that, they try to optimize. They have a team that would go to the hotel before the riders arrived, put their uh, special pillow so that the rider always sleeps with the same pillow and the same mattress to try to optimize the smallest thing, like even the blanket. Like it's, it's just a 1% thing. And that's what helped them uh, arrive to, well, five years after he joined the team. So he joined in 2003, and they started winning in uh, 2008, and they were able to win eight uh, gold medals. Not just that, when they had the next Olympics in London, they, besides winning a couple of gold medals, they put European world uh, uh, racing uh, scores. I don't know how you say it. But yeah, and the uh, world records as well. So they were really on the, on the go. There is a bit of controversial as well. Uh, if you ever see the, um, there is a Netflix documentary called Icarus. And some people may associate this, uh, all the, the good thing that they had with doping. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe that because, well, the science that they have is not new. So the, the concept of compounding uh, small increments and winning a lot is something that has been um, with us for a long time. It has been there in the, the financial history. So for a long time, people have known about compounding interest, right? So you put your money on the side, you earn interest. So when the next time your interest will boil, it will already get the money from the previous one, and then you compound, and you compound, and you compound, and you gain more. So the, sci the science behind it is not new, so we cannot just associate it with doping. Also, other teams like Formula One have been doing this for a long time. Like we know from, well, maybe not now, everything is carbon fiber, but for a long time they would just uh, change a little bit of, oh, this should be aluminum, or this should be carbon fiber. And that will give them like that sec uh, extra second or extra little bit of weight reduction that would uh, help them maybe cross the finish line faster or be able to cross a guy faster. So I did a bit of calculation. Uh, my math is not the best in the world, but uh, bear with me. So my calculation was if you help a team improve 1% of their work every day throughout a year, you'll be able to arrive at 37 times uh, bigger improvement than not improving, basically. And that's a small thing, just 1%. The same thing goes the other way around as well. So if you help a team get, right. decrease their performance by 1% every day, they will end up 37 times worse than they started. So it's something that we, that we have been, to be careful of. With especially as uh, scrum masters, agile coaches, something that we should be really aware. Even product owners. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, I'm talking uh, a lot about the the school stuff, about racing, about um, uh, racing teams and uh, Formula One and all these good guys. And you're probably wondering, mm, okay, tell me about a real case scenario while you implement a small change in your team. So I'm going to, to go with, uh, through uh, small things that I've been doing with my teams that uh, I think they have been helping. You can always ask some of the guys here. They will <laughs> confirm or deny that that's helping. So I'll leave it up to them. So one of the things that I like to do with my teams is, for example, taking meeting notes. It's something that doesn't require that much effort. It's like a 1% improvement that you can do 
and that will give you something good in the end. You'll track it, it's transparency, you get a lot more visibility, and it's something that you don't need that much ad adoption to do. You can even do it yourself in a meeting, right? Um, another small thing, and I, I like to do this because, well, uh, I love the <laughs> I have giant god mode, let's say it like that. Yeah, like imagine you have a, a very complex workflow. Just try to take one of those boxes out. Are all they really needed? <laughs> or all of them, <laughs> exactly. Leave only three. <laughs> but that would be a 50% or a 100% improvement. But imagine that <clears throat> you just go there, you take one box out. And then after a week, you do go there, you take another box out, and then you take another box out. <laughs> and hopefully, <laughs> yeah, you'll arrive at something better. Another really small thing that I like to do with my teams is to try to, to get them into more of a team spirit. Uh, some people talk about coat of, coat of arms. I, I like to have team logos. So you can see these are basically all my team logos. Uh, and a team logo is such a small thing that we can do that will bring the team together. It's like they will have a similar identity. And it doesn't take that much effort. It's like you just go and paint and uh, yeah. You draw some, some stuff. It's not that much of an effort. And you get a lot of stuff. Something that we notice a lot uh, as well in the Agile community is like, you do retros, you have actions, and then there is no assignee, there is no due date. Yeah, that happens. Uh, yeah. So just, yeah, just ask for an assignee, ask for a due date. It takes 1% of effort, and the gains are, are really good. And this one is like, it's not really a 1%, but I like it. Team agreements. Just get your team together, get the team agreement. You reap the benefits in the long run. Like, they will compound. The more agreements, the more everyone is working together. They know exactly what they are doing. And this one I did recently with my team was, we had teams, they have channels, just give them ownership. Like, we had problems with, oh, you need to invite something and then you need to ask the engineering manager or the peer, oh, we don't have ownership. They give them admin to their Confluence pages, give them ownership to their yeah. channels. Let them do, like it's, as uh, Uncle Ben said, right? With great power comes great responsibility. But yeah, I think it's a, it's a good thing. And uh, the last one that, uh, we have been trying to work on, we have been talking about it, we haven't really worked, is what if we are able to reduce all our meetings from 60 minutes to 55? And then everyone always has five minutes to go and prepare for the next meeting. Because how many times do you have a meeting that is back to back to back to back with another meeting? Like tomorrow I have three retrospectives back to back. Like I will have to be running around with my laptop and if we just Say you reduce the meetings to 55 minutes. You have five minutes, everyone can go to, to the bathroom, everyone can be prepared. Maybe people start arriving on time to the meetings, which yeah, it's something that is uh, <laughs> in our teams, it doesn't happen uh, very often. So yeah, basically this is why I wanted to, to come here today to talk with you guys, is to see if we can start shifting our, uh, shifting our mindset uh, as uh, scrum masters and as agile coaches and uh, as, for example engineering managers or delivery managers or everyone that is serving a team to try and stop just to look at the big big changes that you have like all the mammoth things that we have to change in our organization to be more agile or be more lean or whatever we <coughs> put buzzword there that we want to be and instead of looking for those heart shattering uh, kind of changes, just look for the small ones and try to, to introduce the small ones day by day by day by day. Because there is an advantage of adding small changes. They don't cost much. It will not be that difficult for people to do because, yeah, it's a small change, right? Usually you don't need to ask permission or uh, forgiveness for anyone, although I always prefer to ask for forgiveness instead of permission, <coughs> but yeah. And, and that's basically just changing our mindset from 
small, big organizational changes, which sometimes are hard to find, to maybe just a small change that can help the team, like just give them admin rights to a, a team's channel. And yeah, that's basically my rant for you today. Thank you all. <laughs>